Greetings, friends. Blue Mage here. Before we start the show, Amber wanted me to issue a small disclaimer that A, we recorded this episode quite early in the morning, and B, she had just finished binging 18 hours of Jenna Marbles videos the day before. So, if anything sounds different about Amber, well, you'll see what I mean. Enjoy the show. Mountain, Island, Lightning Bolt, Snow Piss, Switchblade, Stab Wood, Red Mage, Blue Mage. Hello, and welcome to Red Mage, Blue Mage. How's it going, Amber? It's going! Baby! Uh, yeah, I guess I could have put a baby there, but I didn't feel like it. Thanks for <laughs> amending my own intro. <laughs> Are you pissed off? No, why would I be mad? <laughs> it's not like I, you know, failed a test or anything recently. Hmm, Interesting. Well, I'm over it. Go! <laughs> <laughs> Take this away! All right. Uh, we are looking towards the future. The future of Strixhaven. Welcome to the future. The future of magic. What is Strixhaven? Strixhaven is the 182nd expansion of Magic the Gathering. I made that number up completely on the fly. Sounds legit, though. Yeah, could be. Um, and it is Magic the Gathering's take on Magic School, Magic Academy. Sure. Remember how we were afraid it was just going to be straight up like exactly uh, Harry Potter? Yes, and that is something that we can talk about. Um, so we do have some information about it. From what I understand, there were a few leaks, and so Wizards was kind of, their hand was forced, and they like had to start a little bit of spoiling of it. So uh, there is a site you can go to on the mothership uh, called The First Lesson, Introduction to Strixhaven. And here's what we know so far. Uh, there are five different colleges that represent different philosophies in learning magic, they correspond to five color pairs, the enemy color pairs. There is Lore Hold, and their motto is Leave No Stone Unturned. There is the Prismari, Express Yourself with the Elements. Quandrix, Math is Magic. Silver Quill, Sharp Style, Sharper Wit. And Witherbloom, Get Your Hands Dirty. And we also got, corresponding with each of those, a command, a spoil card. Yes, what is your initial take on these? None of these colleges appeal to me. At all? None of them. I don't care about any of these schools. What? N no, I don't. I really don't. Wow. Like as they were all. as they were coming out, as we were learning about like the two schools and the color combinations and all that. There was not one that interested me at all. So what I'm saying is I probably don't care about Strixhaven because wow. to me, the guilds of Ravnica, there was like at least two guilds that I'm like, I'm into this. I like them. And it was um, Boros. Boros and um, Rakdos. Um this does not, uh, nothing of these so far screams to me like fun, potential, chaos, fun, I don't know, ridiculousness. You like, don't identify with any of these? Nope, I don't identify with any of these. Prismari, maybe, but. Depends where it, they go with it. It depends on where they go with it. And I'm not really like, I don't really care about the elements of like water and fire so much. Um, I definitely don't like um, this elephant, which tangent, I'm going to go on an elephant tangent. I don't like elephants, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for that, because I know a lot of people love elephants, but I don't like elephants. Wait, you mean it, IRL? You don't like elephants? It's true. Why? <laughs> is this something new you just learned about me? Yes, this is new information. I don't like them. <laughs> Were you harmed by an elephant as a no, youth? No, <laughs> it's 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 how they move. It's how they look. It's this they're scary. 
Uh, elephant could have step on me. Um, I don't like the way they feel. I am. I have look you felt at, an elephant? I have indeed <laughs> felt an elephant. Have you never had an elephant eat a peanut out of your you're, hand? You're a liar. I am not. There's pictures of me with elephant in my fucking childhood album, and I did not enjoy my experience with an elephant. <laughs> It's a tactile and fear response. Wow. This is very interesting. I don't like the prehensile nose. That's cool. That's grab things. Yeah. Who got a nose that long? An elephant, and that's the only one of its kind, and it scares me. You know, if there was a world full of lots of long-nosed creatures, another creature that I don't like is those monkeys that got the big noses. <laughs> Maybe I still like huge noses on elephants. You're, you're weird. <laughs> so anyway, you got, you got, I got me looking at a huge elephant on this lore hold. I don't know what this character is that I've become as <laughs> this red mage has evolved. It's just because it's in the morning, I suppose. But yeah, I am be. very... I I also don't like monkeys too much either. Is it, what other animals do you hate for no reason? I don't... I think I gave a perfectly acceptable reason... I don't like horses either. Okay, now on that we can reach. They got consensus. scary teeth and they kick. And they got those big bowling ball eyes. Yeah, and they get all foamy when they run. Yeah, yeah. and their heads are too big. And the legs is messed up. Yeah, they can't like, draw them. If you look at a if you look at a horse's skeleton, you you it, how how do you exist? What did nature do to you? Yeah, what what did nature have to do to turn you into a running machine? So anyway, as I was saying about Strixhaven, one, <laughs> we got an elephant on Lorehold. Usually my colors, but the elephant p makes me go, no thank you. I don't like the Luxodon. I am sorry to... I. It's nothing you're, personal you're against you. You're definitely in the minority. I feel like there's a lot of people who love the gentle eyes and the caress yeah. of the elephant's trunk on yeah. their cheeks. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. No, thank you. I love the Loxodon. And it's cool getting like a this, what we have in this image in particular. is a very different take on Loxodon that we've seen previously. They're normal like big stout defenders and peacekeepers. And this one looks like curious and adventurous. Yeah, that's good for him. <laughs> but I, I understand what you're saying, where I, none of these colleges appeal to you personally. Which yes. makes sense, because th this is all about, you know, this set is about education and knowledge, and so... Of course I don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I hate this. I don't want to go back to school. I've had enough going back to school nightmares in the last week that I, I'm sick of it. Yeah, yeah, forget that. I, on the other hand... Are you math? Where... Is it magic? Yes. Quandrix is my number one jam. I like Quandrix a lot. I like this character in the splash art. She appears on several cards, so I hope we get to actually meet this person. Maybe. I love it. I I will say, though, can I say something that, that pissed me off when I read this stuff? Sure. So let me, they wrote a little blurb about each uh, college. Here's the Quandrix blurb. Quandrix mages are ingenious math magicians. They study patterns, fractals, and symmetries to command power over the fundamental forces of nature. Okay, cool. They'll solve a Rubik's cube while contemplating the metaphysical properties of the universe and can recite every number of pi backwards. That seems I, very silly. It is very silly. To me, this was written by somebody who, who their entire knowledge of nerddom is like the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, it really does. At the very end, it should have been like jinkies or whatever they say in uh, in uh, Bazingo. It? There it is. There it is. Bajanka. <laughs> yeah, and like I know this is my read on this little blurb. So saying they can recite every number of pi backwards. So pi is transcendental. The digits go on forever. Yes. So that you can't recite it backwards because yeah. there's no last digit. And I was when I read this, I was like, "That's silly." And I was like, "Well, 
It could actually be clever if the person is in on, they know that, so they know that's impossible. So saying that a Quandrix student could do that is like, wow, they can even do that. But I bet they don't. They didn't think about that. And a Rubik's Cube. I mean, come, come on. on. Anyway, so Quandrix I think is cool. Silver Quill I think is cool. And I think if you were going to like any of the houses, any of the colleges from the set, I feel like Silver Quill will be it, depending on what they do with it. From inspiring battle poetry, That's, that, that throws it out to you. To biting arcane insults. These are like the bards of the college. And I'm yeah. like, no, thank you. Like the bards wow. that ca cast Tasha's hideous laughter and that kind of shit, or like scathing words of hurtdom. Wow. Nope. Natural charisma, sharp w style, sharper wit. I have no style, and I my wit is so dull, I can't even cut through a banana. So, you know. <laughs> so not for you. Nope. Uh, Witherbloom sucks, I think. I'm sorry to anybody who's like a big Ooh, fan of Witherbloom. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate... Well, you and I have talked about how we hate graveyard shenanigans. Before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I I um, know people who love playing in the dirt of the grave. Yeah, dirty perverts who want to <laughs> dig in the mud. Wow. And play, and play a non-magic game. I, yeah, no thanks. My, my bigger problem is it's not actually the graveyard stuff. It's just that this feels exactly the same as the black green we've seen a million times. Yeah, it's just, you know, more... Vraska in Ravnica. Right. It's just if you more... if you showed me this stuff, like if you showed me this card and you showed me this art and said this is from the newest Ravnica set, I would not bat an eye at all. Yeah, I think for me it would have been more interesting if it wasn't just. I don't know if they had done like a healing magic instead of a um, graveyard draining essence of living creatures, where it's like oh yeah. you could have done like a green. Uh, white or something. I know they had the black white, but maybe it's something more like we are the healing mages of yeah, not the give necromancers. Yeah, give us a different take. Or if it, if they're all about like plants, I think that could be a different way you could go about it. But I think people really like dredging, so you know, that's they fine. do. I mean, yeah, they can have that. I've got my my quandrix. I've got my silver quill. I'm perfectly happy. I got nothing, nothing yeah, here. Yeah, you have nothing. I'm sad. I was hoping I, for a goblin school. I do have something for you. What? So they also announced with this first look into Strixhaven that they are making some formatting changes to cards and language that they use on cards. Oh, yeah. I did see that. So they're, they are changing going forward. Instead of converted mana cost, it will be called mana value. And instead of saying shuffle your library, they will just say shuffle. What do you think about those? I don't care. Wow, really? Yeah, not really. I mean, to me, mana value is more concise term, knowledge yes. for it. Like CMC is such an old, old, uh, unfriendly term, yes. converted yes. mana cost. I mean, I get it because when, when you're in it for so long, you just see CMC and you know like it's the mana total. And right. so if you just say it's the mana total or the mana value, then I think that's just a shorter way to say it. So I'm fine with that. Um, and then what was the other one? They are, instead of saying shuffle your library, they're just going to say shuffle. Shuffle what? So that's unclear to you. Yes. If you say shuffle, I don't know, shuffle my hand, shuffle. I mean, I know that sounds silly. Here's the thing about language and word stuff that, when you write instructions, to be very clear, you cannot assume that anybody understands the object of the action. So you tend to repeat yourself a lot when writing instructions. Um, you making sure that people understand what the target of the action is. And so for me, when you say just shuffle, I'm brand new to magic. Shuffle what? Shuffle my library my deck my hands my cards shuffle what you know and i know that sounds silly when you hear me say these questions but people get confused people and it's just i just i don't know i like it when things are very 
direct of what the action and the target of the action is, just from my instruction writing experience. I do think that what the original term was, shuffle your library, library is already a word that you have to have special knowledge about. And so them shortening that to shuffle, yeah, now you need to have special knowledge that when it just says shuffle, that means shuffle, shuffle your, deck. your deck. But that already existed. So, but your your ideal world, maybe they would just say shuffle your deck. Yeah, I would say that. I think that's more common. And I, I it's, I just say this with ten years of writing knowledge of specifically instructions, right? And understanding that when you're onboarding somebody into a new experience, you have to be as specific and repetitive as possible to drive home to the point where when you see shuffle, you could say, Oh yeah, I know that's to shuffle my deck. But if I'm, but what does it hurt? to? Include yeah. That? Yeah. I don't know why they would want to remove two extra words that would just support the action for what, for just to, you know, sometimes I, I'm a fan of the less is more. Um, and I, tr I've tried like I, I, and when I talk about this, and I talk about my 10 years experience, I have tried to cut things to make things more concise, to make things more, um, um, like I would, if I refer to the same object in the se same sentence or in the same paragraph twice, I tried to replace it with it on the sex second occurrence. And then I found out people weren't understanding. So I would have to say, you know, de depress the, or unbuckle the thing, pull out the buckle tongues, put the buckle tongues here. I'm talking about like a, for a car seat buckle. And if you don't, if right. you say put them here, people will be like, what, what do you want me to put? The, right. the buckle, the buckle itself or the buckle tongues or what? And it just like, whew. especially because you can't control where they start reading. Yes. And especially when they're skimming and stuff, but right. I know that's not the same as obviously a game, but to me, this change is, is kind of indicating they're making these choices more with digital rather than paper in mind. Yes. Cause there, it doesn't matter right. if you say shuffle your library or shuffle, the computer does it for you instantly. Right. So. It doesn't I, matter. They should. Okay. So that's another thing is I try very, very hard when I write instructions for written for paper for printed. So somebody actually gets a physical manual versus how we write for video. And we have two different style guides for that because with video, you have the addition of a human being interacting and touching the objects and it's easier um, there's this, it's not, it's a theory. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Modality theory where basically it's people learn better when they actually see something and hear at the same time. I yeah. don't. Yeah. So M multimodality. Uh, yes. Um, and when you write for a video, you can take these shortcuts, you can edit your language down. You can, um, use other terms a little bit because you have the supported uh visual of a you human have a second being. channel yes to actually see and like reinforce what you're seeing but when you're in written and all you have is just your words it's difficult so i think i i appreciate what they're trying to do with their arena uh and changing their language to reflect the changes that are happening in the digital world but you can't do that for written physical cards because it's a different completely different experience and you're going to need that extra support from two words <laughs> than versus what you're doing on on a computer so right that's my hey amber has right. some knowledge in this area uh, portion of the show a serious moment yeah. with amber it sounds like you're not upset about it. But. Yeah, I wouldn't have done it. And I probably would be making a style guide and diverging how we write for 
online experience versus physical. I know that's double work, but you have two massive audiences and you kind of have to cater. It would be the same thing where it's like, um, if they're doing arena, are they making cards read out loud? when um like is there a hearing like for people who um are uh, can't see right uh are they gonna do that are they gonna start doing accessibility right. things uh for for people who can't see the cards you might as well if you're gonna be porting all these words into arena that'd be nice do they not do that right now i don't know i have no idea because I, I mean unfortunately it's not my experience and i don't usually seek it out uh specifically because even then, it's like if you are writing online for that experience, I don't know. It's 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 worth it in my opinion to diverge and have two style guides on writing, because you're trying to serve two yeah. different audiences. It looks like the accessibility know. isn't very good. Okay. But yeah, I agree with you. It'd be cool to have on Arena, like, you could have a checkbox that would say, like, simplified text, and it would just abbreviate a lot of these things, or you could hit a checkbox and it gives you the full paper text. Sure. That'd be neat. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's probably worth the time and effort. I think so, too. To be quite because honest. you would, you, I'm sure the complexity of the game turns some potential players off from it. So making it work and read simpler is good. Yes. Okay. So getting back to actual Strixhaven proper, um, what I want to talk about now is what we want to see in Strixhaven, what we don't want to see in Strixhaven, and our actual predictions of what we think we're going to see. Okay. Do you want me to lead off or do you want to take one? All I have to say is that I'm sad because I don't know if goblins are going to show up or not. I I don't think they are. And they better not be like house elves. Oh, that would be the worst. I would be very, very sad and very, very mad if uh, goblins were just like janitors. Oh, that would be the worst. I want to see, like, you know, know goblins can be super ingenious. Yeah, they definitely can. Why don't they have a little school? What I want to see is I want to see a little goblin school form. I don't like this set. I think I think it would be very cool to have a goblin as like a professor or something. Yeah, I That'd suppose. There better be a goblin professor. We'll see. It feels like we just ha- like goblins haven't been around much lately. I this is my biggest complaint. So you want <laughs> goblins? That's your first ask. My first ask is I want goblins. Gotcha. Cool. That might be my only ask. <laughs> I want, I'm looking at Quandrix, and as I said, that's the college that I'm like, ooh, you're you're speaking my language right now. I want, if they're going to say math is magic, I want the blue-green Quandrix cards to be complex and mathy. I want them, like, I don't want them to shy away from making complex cards. Like, that's, this is the audience you're talking to, the math nerds who are, like, you're saying math is magic, you're saying Rubik's Cube, stupid, but, what, you know, silly, whatever. <laughs> Give me some complex mathy stuff. I want some convoluted shit in Quandrix. I'm so let down by the Like, nothing about this set appeals to me. Like, nothing so far. Like, even just, like, I keep scrolling up and down this article to, like, yeah. feel something, See. and I feel nothing. <laughs> I feel nothing. Like, uh, what do you think about each of the college's founders is an elder dragon? So we're gonna get some elder dragons. Does that that do anything for you? I'm sick of dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is dragons. Okay. What are I, we on talk here? Can I? God can I, damn. Can I give you a want that I have for the set that might actually save it for you? Okay. Try. What I want, so, I mean, I think everybody's in line with, we want this to be distinct from Harry Potter. And so far, it looks like it is. I think one thing that could really set it apart is if you really emphasized the high school drama angle. But it's college. It's still college drama. 
Well, I wanted to read like high school. I mean, they're called colleges, oh. but that just means like different disciplines. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I want to see some Degrassi style shit or like almost like Monster Hearts. I want to see like characters having tiffs and like I, I want it to be, you know, high schooly. I think that could be fun. Maybe. And would it feel different? Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah, I don't want there to be some... I just want this to be like a slice of life kind of set with magic. I don't want there to be some sort of epic yes. problem that yes. they have to solve and then like it's yeah. fucking Ugin shows up for some goddamn reason. Oh or my god, I bet he Bolas. does. I bet you Ugin is going to show up, and I bet you it's going to hint uh, the return of Nicole Bolas. I guarantee it. St okay, so that's a prediction for you? <laughs> yeah. It, some motherfucking dragon's going to show up, most likely Ugin. I could see that. Especially because he's all about knowledge and studying and shit. Yeah, and there's some artifact here in these colleges that they're protecting in the middle of the center of the school that all these professors all know about, and there's going to be a select group of college students who are going to try and protect it, and then one of them is going to spark, and you're going to get some planeswalkers out of this goddamn college because they're going to make some epic battle that some dragon's going to try and steal some shit. That is my prediction. I think that's interesting. Like I said, I, I can see Ugin being involved. I would say... The only thing that makes it so I don't think that's going to happen is they're already building up to their next, like, War of the Spark style big event, which is going to be Phyrexia. Because we just had in call time, Vorin Cluck showed up out of nowhere. Rem remind me what happens in Phyrexia. So, um, this was back in uh, the Mirrodin, Scars of Mirrodin block, where the Phyrexians invaded Mirrodin and took it over and turned it into new Phyrexia. And Phyrexians are black goop? Yeah, they they spread this contagion that transforms. It's like a blend between where metal and flesh. Where do they originate from? Uh, Phyrexia. Phyrexia, yeah. What's but, uh, Phyrexia? So, do you remember Thran? Or not Thran. Uh, uh, God damn it. Do you remember Yogmoth? We had a conversation yeah. about sexy Yogmoth. Yeah, what about him? So, he was the founder of Phyrexia. He is like a... a a mad scientist, a evil doctor who experimented with uh, life and manipulating flesh and death, and so he started this world where. Where did he get yes. his knowledge from? Um, I think he, I don't know. Oh, it's Eldrazi. Oh my god, <laughs> it's Eldrazi. <laughs> I thought you were asking me a real question. I was, I was, I, I want to know, like, why did he, like, get inspired to do this? Well, he, he was a member of the Thran, which are, like, in Dominaria, the Thran existed way before the magic storyline started. So that it's the trope of an ancient race that has gone extinct. And they were just very sophisticated. An ancient race, you say? Yes. What, what race is more ancient then the yay Eld unto the Eldrazi. What if the Eldrazi are Thran but morphed? <laughs> that's, that's actually a cool idea. The Thran disappeared because they ascended. Yeah, and they became Eldrazi. And then here we go. I mean, I'm bing, down, I'm bada down bada for bing, that. Bada bing, bada boom. Magic school. Ugin, Nicole, Bolas, planes walk into an Eldrazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow we always wind up back here. I don't know what we need somehow. It's all connected. It's all entwined. Well, I wanted to return because you said something that I fervently agree with. I don't want a Dark Lord plot in this block. I also would like there not to be a MacGuffin. Like every, like there's some wheel that unwinds time. And I no. don't know. Like I'm tired of MacGuffins and I am tired of epic battles. Um, yes. I would like it to be, like you said, a slice of life. Like, we're in school. We're having school times. Yeah. I want this to feel like uh, uh, like Dominaria was a few years ago, where we're just going to this world and enjoying this world. 
there isn't really a heavy plot going on. I bet you that there is going to be. They gotta, they can't stop not having MacGuffins. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Unfortunately. It's gonna be a wand. Maybe. Oh, that's too on the nose. No, that can't be. They, They would be like, oh, wait. We can't have it be a wand because because that was is... a Harry Potter thing. So it's got to be something else. It's got to be a lava axe, an orb. Oh God, not another damn orb. <laughs> a Enough cube? with these orbs. There is you it go. The Arkenstone? Is it the Tesseract? Is it the All Spark? What could it be? <laughs> <laughs> is it the Borg? <gasps> what if it is the All Spark, but it's All Sparks? All Drazi could... Spark. Oh, shit. (laughs) Where's my big board? Well, think about this. With Universes Beyond, we could have the All Spark and Magic the Gathering now. Oh, my God. We will, because Transformers is a Hasbro property. Holy shit. Is What's-His-Face the fire truck a planeswalker? (laughs) Optimus Prime? The fire truck? He's a fire truck. He's a semi truck. Whatever. It's a big truck. <laughs> I thought it was a fire truck. Let me Google this because I want to make sure. Optimus Prime oh God, fire please. truck. No. He's a fire truck. He is absolutely not. Optimus Prime A.K.A. Fire Convoy is a stern and serious commander where he took up the form of a fire truck. No. Are you basing your are you basing your knowledge off of fucking goddamn Michael Bay's uh, Look, uh, Transformers? You silence. Look at this. I'm sending you images. We are going off the rails, but I don't care. I, look, Prom soon struck out Command on Earth where he took the form of a fire truck. Don't even. I don't even. I don't even care. I'm not even gonna look at your damn link. All right. I'm look. I'm looking at your link. <laughs> this is a right. semi truck. He is a fire truck. So. Yeah. So that off, that yeah. one. No. It is a fire truck. Google it. Google what? Optimus Prime is a fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> no. Of course that's gonna turn up some bullshit. How about this? What look kind Optimus of Prime truck? look Optimus Prime appears in the Transformers and am- Transformers animated series in 2008 as a red semi trailer truck able to be fitted with many trailer attachments most notably one that effectively makes him a fire truck. I googled what kind of truck is Optimus Prime. The first generation Optimus Prime transforms into a Freightliner FL86 cab over semi truck. What kind of car? What kind of car? A truck is Optimus Prime. <laughs> you don't even know the difference between a truck and a car. How can you be trusted? Generation 1. Within his chest is a mystic talisman known as the Autobot Matrix of Leadership. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fire truck. You can't... You, you are biased. You are I'm putting not. in the answer to your search. Alternate modes. Cybertronian cab over truck, futuristic semi trailer truck slash fire truck. And this is under the set the heading alternate modes. In universe information, alternate modes. So it's an fire alternate truck. to the default. It's his default alternate. Okay. I, I I rest my case, Your Honor. Whatever. I'm right. But yes, to come back to where this started, no buffins, please. I don't want planeswalkers in there, but that there's no chance of that happening. This one of these students is gonna planeswalk. I, one of them is gonna spark. And it better not be for goddamn traumatic reasons. I want uh, a loxodon to spark. That'd be Whatever, cool. that's fine. As uh, speaking of planeswalkers, I don't want any in the set, but I have a prediction that Kazmina will be there. Oh yeah. What about what's her face with all the gidgets gadgets? You know the artifact lady. The Thopter lady. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sahili. Yeah, Sahili. Yeah, she could be there. There's The trouble is, like, there's a lot of 
this has the potential for a lot of blue planeswalkers to be running around. Nizmizitz, Nizmizitz, Fizzmizitz, the dragon. He's not a planeswalker, though. Well, he's a dragon. Yeah. Maybe he was a drake. Maybe he is a planeswalker, and we just don't know about it. He's Could hiding be. it. Could be. I don't think so, though. Because the last time we saw him, he got reincarnated as, like, the avatar of Ravnica, kind of. Oh, that's terrible. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that either. Um... <laughs> I wouldn't want to be Any reincarnated as the, like, avatar of anything. I don't want to become not me and represent a whole damn fucking plane. Yeah. Just like how I wouldn't want to be a living will and testament. A la Jace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? I don't know. I'm, I, I like, the mechanic. What mechanic? Do you think it's going to be like the new? Do they really talk about it? I can't remember. No, they haven't talked about any new mechanics. Okay, well. We do know that um, double faced modal cards are going to be a part of it, as they have been the last couple sets. They got to bring back Megamorph. But uh, please, no. They got to bring back Haunted. I don't know what the uh, the returning mechanic is going to be. Um, the prof, his prediction was that level up will be a returning mechanic. Oh, that makes sense. Like you students. get your degrees. Yep. You gotta take your spells. owls. Yep. So I think and that would be a great fit. I would love that. Um, I am predicting that we will get a wizard sport that is not Quidditch. Oh, what's it going to be? I don't know. It's, it's going to be, be not Quidditch. I hope the big thing is just that they're going to go to a tournament. Oh, there's going to be a ball. So you want those kind of tropes. Yeah, I like that kind of shit. I like yeah. there being a ball. I like there being like a wizarding trials. I think that's really fun. Uh, It'd I, be cool if that's how they formatted like the final exams. Yeah. Like in this in this world, the final exams are like trials and dungeons and stuff. Is there going to be a quiz mechanic? I hope there's a flipping coin command mechanic, but they're not going to do it because there's no goblins. No, they're not going to. And it's too chaos for what this is supposed to be, which makes I'm, me sad. I'm also predicting a non-human headmaster. Of course, it's going to be a raccoon. That would be cool. I don't think that's what it's going to be, but that would be it's cool. Gonna be a, it's going to be a loxodon. What I don't want to see is, surprise, the headmaster is a planeswalker in disguise. Or a centaur. Or a centaur. I, one thing, coming back to the Planeswalkers, and I don't want them here, I, one of the things, one, I'm just getting tired of it. I, we've just seen it way too much. But two, I don't like going to a world, a cool world, that they're designing and making us fall in love with, and then having that that world's like authority subverted by Planeswalkers. So you go to call yeah. time, it's like, wow, this is a cool, like, Viking Norse mythology world, and they've got their gods and everything. And then mm -hmm. Tybalt shows up and just shits on everything. Right. And kills, the, like, traps their god of trick of lies and tricks. And it's like, how's this guy the god of trickery if he got being boozled by Tybalt? I'm done with it. I don't want I'm, any more of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of all of those... Just have it be a really old raccoon who likes to paint and is actually a kind and generous and open and communicative uh, professor who... You're just describing a Ryutama character. Who wants to take care of everybody, maybe. And who owns a cafe and... Sells his paintings and yeah. they're really bad. But people in town buy them because he's just so damn nice. And he always gives them a j jar of jam with it. Shapeshift. Check it out on the Geek Spective Network. <laughs> nice plug there. <laughs> Thanks. And speaking of, uh, you can find us on the Geek Spective Network, where maybe you found this or maybe you found it elsewhere. Red Mage Blue Mage, at Red Blue MTG on Twitter. I'm at Wolfmere on Twitter. I'm at Rocket Orca. And until next time, I'll be representing Counterspell. And I'm scared of Luxodons. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>